three and a half minute pot pot fish stories. Help wanted. One afternoon, the pot pot fish went over to his friend Sonny's house for a visit. It was the first time he had been invited to her home. He was very excited, a little nervous, and to make it a perfect play date, he brought something amazing to show her. Her home was bright and colorful. Everywhere he looked, he saw something unusual. He was surprised how different it was from his cozy home on the other side of the reef. Would you like to work on the seashell castle I'm building, she asked. Of course, said the pout pout fish. He had never built such a fancy model before, and he didn't know if he could do it right, but he thought he could figure it out. He turned out to be more like a bulldozer than a builder. His tower tipped over and broke the drawbridge. The pout pout fish felt like diving into the deep, deep dark. Don't worry, I can fix it later, said Sonny. Why don't we play something else? She brought out her new submarine scooter that she'd gotten for her birthday. Wow, she could zip and zoom so fast, the pout pout fish couldn't wait to try it. Do you know how to ride it? asked Sonny. Only a minnow just out of an egg doesn't know how to ride a scooter, the pout pout fish thought, but he didn't want her thinking he was a baby. Sure, he said. Crash, smash. The pout pout fish lost control and flip-flopped. He felt like a foolish little fry after all. Maybe we could do something more relaxing, said Sunny. Let's make friendship bracelets. She used the pout pout fish's favorite colors as seagrass to braid him a handsome charm for his tail. The pout pout fish tried his best to make one for Sunny, but all he could weave was a tangle of knots. He was very upset. He felt like he was ruining their visit. I don't know how to do anything, he said. That's not true, said his friend. The only thing you don't know how to do is ask for help. Sunny's encouraging words cheered him up. Let me show you how to fix your bracelet, she said. She twisted and braided until Pout Pout Fish understood how to do it himself. Soon he had made a beautiful band to give his friend. Now the Pout Pout Fish had a question for Sonny. Will you teach me how to ride your scooter? Of course, said Sonny. She showed him what to do and helped him practice. Soon the Pout Pout Fish was zipping around faster than a whirlpool. There was something else he wanted to try. Could we re rebuild that seashell castle together? You could show me how to do it. Together, they rebuilt the palace with a new tower that was straight and strong. He, as he was getting ready to go home, the pout pout fish remembered that he brought something to show his friend. It was a clever trick he taught himself. With Sunny looking, he covered a small petal, pebble with an empty shell. <coughs> he Then, he waved a magic coral wand, and presto, he revealed a big, shiny pearl. Sunny thought it was the best trick she'd ever seen. Can you show me how to do that? Of course, said the Pout Pout Fish. Sometimes a little help from your friend can be magic. The sick day. Blah, 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 cough. The Pout Pout Fish woke up with a bad cold. As he tried to get ready for school, his head was swimming and he ached from tip to tail. The Pout Pout Fish knew he should stay home. He needed to rest and get better. He put away his backpack, then he curled up in his bed of seaweed and fell right back to sleep. When he woke up again, staying in bed didn't seem so bad. He cuddled this snoozy snuggly, and together they read their favorite book. Then they pretended his bed was a flying ship so he could shoot out of the ocean into the skies above. But soon they splashed down as the pout pout fish started to get tired and dizzy. Blah, 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 cough. The pout pout fish was still feeling achy, and now he was also feeling bored. He was stuck at home in his seaweed bed while all his friends were having a great time at school. He pictured them darting into nooks and disappearing into crannies as they played an exciting game of hide-and-seek at recess. He imagined his friends were learning all sorts of new things, and he was sure he would never catch up. And he was missing music day. Once a week, Miss Hewitt taught the class a bubbly new song. The pout pout fish sank sadly down into his bed. He felt worse than ever. Meanwhile, the school day was not going at all how pout pout fish was imagining. On the playground, the kinder puppies did, did not play hide-and-seek. It was Pout Pout Fish's favorite game, and they decided it wouldn't be the same without him. During Mrs. Hewitt's lessons, Octavian took careful notes so the Kinder Guppy's absent classmate wouldn't fall behind. During music time, they didn't feel much like singing. It just wasn't the same without Pout Pout Fish. But then Miss Hewitt helped them invent a new song about how much they missed their glum-faced chum. After school, a group of Kinder Puppies, Guppies, swam off. They were on a mission. But the Pout Pout Fish was surprised to see his friends. He was more surprised to hear the song they sang for him. Dear Pout Pout Fish, when you are out sick, all of us have one wish, one one wish. Get well and come back back quick. 
The sweet, silly song made him feel much better and much, much better after saying goodbye to his friends. The Pope fish got comfy and cozy in his seaweed bed. Even though he missed school, he learned something new. Friendship is the best medicine. Looking for trouble. One afternoon, the Pope Pope fish was swimming around with some of his friends. Let's play tag, said Sonny. I'm not it. Not it, cried everyone except the Pope Pope fish. He didn't mind being it to get the game started. Soon he regretted being such a good sport. He could not catch anyone. Either his friends were extra speedy or he was extra slow today. This game is no good, he thought. Just then, Steffi and Clara darted in front of him. Can't catch me, said the squid. Can't catch me, said the clam. The popo fish dove and missed them both. Instead, he scraped his tail. Ouch, he shouted. His friends paused the game to make sure he was okay. It wasn't a big scrape, but after a few trembles and few tears, the popo fish was feeling fine. Careful, popo fish, said Steffi and Chalera. Let's play a game. Let's play. I will be it now, said Sunny. With shouts and squeals, everyone darted away. Popo fish scooted off with Flo and Ray, the two very slithery sea creatures who joined the fun. As Sunny came closer, the popo fish tried to slip under a ledge with them and bumped his nose. Stop the game, said Flo. Popo fish is hurt again, said Ray. You keep finding trouble, said Steffi. Maybe you need a break, said Clara. The popo fish's frown was bigger than ever. It wasn't a bad bump, but decided Clara was right. Stay right there, said Ray. Don't flip a flipper. It's good for your own good, popo fish. You don't know what could happen next, said Clara. The popo fish sighed a big burst of bubbles. He was going to miss out on the rest of the game. But his friend Sonny knew what he was thinking. We won't play tag without you, she said. We'll stay here and keep you safe. Everyone agreed with Sonny. They didn't want their friend to have any more troubles. They made Popo Fish feel better, and after swimming all around, it was nice to sit and take it easy with his friends. At first, all of them chatted and told stories and jokes, but soon they ran out of things to say. They grew quiet. Many of them fell fast asleep. The Popo Fish felt very safe and very bored. And then he realized something. Oh no! What's wrong? asked Sonny. I'm fine, said the Popo Fish, but sitting around waiting for something terrible to happen when we should be playing and having fun is no good. It's worse than a scrape on your fin or a bump on your nose. The Popo Fish dart darted off. Let's play tag, he said, and I am not it. As he scurried away, and the rest of the afternoon, there was a couple more bumps and scrapes. Ray bruised his tail and Steffi twisted a tentacle, but after making sure they were okay, the friends got right back to their game. Nobody looked for trouble, and they all found fun. Space Chase. One morning, Miss Hewitt announced that the Kinder Guppy class was launching a special mission. You mean like a rocket ship? asked the Popo Fish. Their teacher smiled. I mean that today we're going to explore the wonders of outer space. Each of you will choose a space topic to report in front of the class. That will be out of this world, said Eli. Too far, said Steffi. What does outer space have to do with the ocean? Why don't we find out, said their teacher. Five, four, three, two, one. Let the space chase begin. Blast off! Everyone rushed to pick an interesting topic. I choose the planets in our solar system, said Octavian, who loved to handle more than one thing at a time. I bet Sunny chooses the sun, said Clara. She can choose whatever subject she wants, said Miss Hewitt. Where, where would we be without everyone's favorite star? Sunny asked. I am happy to learn about it. As his classmates settled on their choices, Popo Fish managed to fly up, 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 out of the ocean, through the blue skies and into the darkness above, Rocketing into space seemed like a lot like diving down in the deep, deep dark. For his topic, the Popo Fish decided to try to stay close to home. He chose the moon. Miss Hewitt said it seemed like a good choice. Miss Hewitt helped all the students in the find the classroom library books filled with pictures and information about their topics. The Popo Fish discovered two books about the moon to read and explore. The students all worked hard on their presentations. They read and drew. They cut out props and practiced what they were going to say. Finally, it was time for their space mission to begin. Miss Hewitt let them choose the order in which the students would present their space topic. The pout pout fish was last, and Octavian went first. There are eight planets in our solar system, the octopus said, holding a model of each planet in his tentacles. They are all circle the sun, but the Earth is the only planet with water where we can live. He wowed them with many more facts about the planets. Sunny drew pictures, about, talked about pictures in the sky known as constellations. They are formed by drawing imaginary lines between certain stars. Many constellations are pictures of sea creatures such as crab, whale, and porpoise. One of them is known as Pisces. Piscis, Piscis, Piscis. A constellation of two fish. Why are there no clam constellations? asked Clara. 
The Pope Pope fish laughed even though he was starting to feel nervous about getting up in front of the class. One by one, the other students took their turns. Sonny talked about how the sun's light feeds the ocean plants that many sea creatures eat. Heat from the sun also helps cause waves and currents, and it keeps our water at the right temperature. Eli blew them away by talking about flying objects called asteroids. An asteroid is a big rock in the sky that blasts through space faster than you can imagine. 66 million years ago, a giant asteroid the size of a mountain hit the ocean. Ash and dust from the impact blocks sunlight, causing the mountain to cool down and ice to cover parts of the earth. The Pope Pope fish shivered, but it wasn't about hearing the, the cold. It was his turn next. You can do this, he told himself. You might think the moon is another big rock in the sky, the Pope Pope fish began, but it is so much more. As it circles our planet, the moon causes an invisible force to make the ocean's tides go up and down. That sounds like magic, said Clara. That sounds like the force of gravity, said Miss Hewis. The Pope Pope fish amazed his classmates with the more moon facts. The moon looks like it's covered with land and seas, he said. Far out, said Eli. Let's all move to the moon. But there's no water on the moon, the Pope Pope fish added. What we see when we looked at the moon are dry plains and basins. The moon is our over our night light. When our part of the earth is turned away from the sun at night, the sun sneaks us a little light by bouncing it off the moon and down to us. The popo fish smiled at his son, friend Sonny. The sunshine helps us see the moon, and I think it helps the moon feel less alone in the dark. Miss Hewitt said it was a perfect ending to the kindergarten kinder guppy's exciting day. And when she sent them outside for recess, a proud Pope Pope fish had one more thing to say to all his fellow explorers. Let the space chase begin. Opposite day. One morning, the Pope Pope fish met his friends Eli and Octavian at the park. He was the last to arrive. It's awful nice to see you, said Eli with a big smile. That's not nice, said Pope Pope fish. Eli laughed. Turn your pout inside out. I mean, I'm happy to see you. We've decided today that today is opposite day. We're saying the opposite of what we mean. Up means down and big means small, said Octavian. Oh, said the Popo fish. I guess I could play that game. Why not, said Eli. It's just... I think he's already started playing, said Octavian. I get it. And they all laughed.